Are you grabbing a cup of coffee or a cup of tea? I'm having a cup of tea right here, <laughs> right now. It feels like Tom Holland drinks a dozen cups of coffee a day with how energetic he is. I drink tea, darling. I drink tea, darling. Well, I do drink coffee if I'm in the States, but I, when I'm at home, I drink tea because that would be um, treason. Alright, let's do this. We got Thomas Cavanaugh all the way from Exeter, UK. Oh, riding in the bandwagon. Look at that. It's a bumpy country road. Thomas, thank you so much for joining us today with Bandwagon TV's Joyride. How are you doing today, sir? I'm very, very well. Thank you, Nick. Thank you very much for taking me on today. It's going to be great chatting with you. Looking forward to it. I hope it's a, a comfortable ride. We're going to take it easy. You know, these, these back roads of England. Uh, I want you to, to really tell our audience, people who maybe are not familiar with you, people who are, tell us a little bit about who you are, a little bit about your musical influences, and obviously where you're from. Yep, so I am from Exeter in England, which is the southwest of the country, just north of Plymouth, if you're more familiar with that. Um, I've been in bands since I've been 16. I've toured the UK and Europe. The band for like 10 years, which was like the main band I was in. And we had a top 40 rock record in between Pink Floyd and Nirvana, which is incredible. Um, so we've done amazing things here in the UK, played all major rock UK festivals and, and entered into Europe. And then the course of 2015, the band disbanded. I started going solo. I started transitioning then into transitioning to more into country, um, which I guess we'll get more and talk about later in the interview. But yeah, I know, I've been doing that ever since really. I'm a self-produced writer, mixer and, and mastering. I do everything here in my home studio behind me, everything you hear from me is all done by myself. Yeah, I want to talk about your transition of country here in a second, but doing a, you know, we do a lot of research and, and stalking on the Instagram. You got a great post, and it was really one of those uh, transition photos. Uh, me here ten years ago, I think it might have been, and it's the punk version of yourself. You got the hair, <laughs> you know, the emo. But you know, uh, you're you talk about you know quit smoking and and going to the gym. I wanted to talk to you about like how important mental health is. And this industry can be very stressful. Also, you're you're trying to play to fans and social media with your persona and your image. Uh, what was it like to to really get mental like, wellness into your life and then trend and putting that towards your music? It's so important. I mean. I... <sighs> With things like that, sometimes you don't really realize how important it is until maybe you've hit like a rock bottom sort of kind of thing. So, you know, as I said, I quit smoking because I wanted to, I chose that to be the best move for me to get my vocal ability as best as I can with my range and my lung capacity. And then I wasn't always self, I was very, very self-conscious of my image. And obviously I cut my hair, thought it was a better look for me. Um, and I wanted to get a little bit bigger, not massive like The Rock, but um, close enough maybe. Just so I could feel a bit more comfortable in my clothes and a bit more comfortable when I take photographs. And uh, recently I've had my teeth uh, done as well because again it's things like that with especially with social media and nowadays a lot of it's based on image so um, I am heavily influenced in what people see of me um, I can't deny that I think a lot of people are influenced by that nowadays so I have been trying to put my mindset as positively as I can and you know the gym really helps me that really distresses me and you know and then I can come back into the studio and be fresh-minded and hopefully write the next hit so yeah. Well, I love that, you know, I think mental health is extremely important these days and you say something important that I truly believe in and it's just the social media. It can be a great thing. You know, it makes the world a lot smaller, interactions with people. But then there's just like everything else, there's those d dark corners and um, and you try to avoid them, but you just sometimes can't help it. So I think you're a great influence on a lot of musicians, just accepting who you are, but also just realizing that, you know, it's important to get healthy, go to the gym, you know, quit smoking, especially, you know, being a singer. I think that's very cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. I, d I mean, because the other thing is as well, I don't, I don't drink alcohol. I've stopped, I stopped drinking alcohol. So the age limit here in the UK is 18. So I actually stopped drinking the day after my 18th birthday and I've never drank since. And it's something that's never been uh, something that, that fulfills me. Um, I actually don't like being drunk. I don't like being in that sort of out of control. I can have the fun time 
I'm as much as a drunk person. Sometimes people think I'm that drunk because I can have a good time, you know, and it's just like I don't have to have a drink to have a good time. Put me on a dance floor and I'll, I'll show you a good time. So it sounds like I'm a dating app. <laughs> We're gonna find you a we're gonna find you a date here soon, my friend. By the end of this episode, I, I was gonna say, look at you got the look too, the shaved head, the beard, you know, the 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 the, the stubbles. I forget the actor who's really famous. Um, uh, he was in. Uh, he, I can't remember now, and I'm gonna remember after this episode. But anyways, we'll move on. Okay, so um. Thomas, I wanted to ask, ask you this too. You were part of a punk rock band and the transition to going into country, how was that and why country? Country's always been a bit of a, you know, secret secret listening party for myself. I'm more influenced in more of the mainstream kind of country, um, like Dan and Shay and more recently more Keith Urban. And there's, there's things with the music that I was like, this is this is more edging to rock at the time. And I was like, oh, maybe I can start, you know, writing this in my studio. So I started producing things and because vocally, I, I'm going to be, I don't have a country voice. Um, I don't have that low register. I have more of a, a rock. So I've been trying to figure it out what it is that makes that country sound. And I think recently people have been taken on board and, and kind of like the sound that I'm going for slightly country and you know slightly rock and I, I think for me right now it's it's where i want to be it's who i am and you know I, I just love making music right now and i'm really happy and i think it's showing in my results and my listening and my streams and all things like that and getting a lot of attention i think it's the right place right time for me right now and i'm really happy to go forward and exciting to see what the next five years bring for me got a great song the one and we'll plug that and your new music coming up here after the the lightning round but you have this contemporary country music sound. And I, I want to ask you, and I ask this to every Brit and really people from all over the world, how country is I, perceived where you live? From a, a non-listener, uh, people think it's um, just American and that's all. It's just farm, very truck, very whiskey, brandy, et cetera, et cetera. And then now over here in the UK, it has been growing. So there's, there's different elements to the country now. I'm finding it's growing. It's just growing like every month. The sound's just changing all the time. You've got your very like, I wouldn't say not generic, it's maybe not the right word, but the very like hardcore sort of sound. You've got Dolly Parton and things like that. And then you start branching into Dan and Shay and things that are just taking more of a pop side to it. So that's what we kind of get pushed on from, you know, from this point of view, getting pushed over here they're trying to make it you know with like more mainstream and more radio friendly sort of music so um, it's difficult isn't it when you when you try and push things to different countries because you have to learn how that culture work what will work and make it you know marketable i guess i was gonna also ask is i guess i can see that country music is getting more popular in england i know there was a big concert that you had tons of uh, featured guests on that were just in london i think weeks ago yeah, uh, at, say, yeah. The, yeah the o2 arena and um and i'm seeing a lot of posts and i can see that country music is getting more popular whether it is in europe and elsewhere but i wanted to ask you too the, the future music uh, you know you had a recent podcast where you're talking about singles and something that i've noticed as well our attention span is really short. We don't we don't really have the attention to, to listen to a full album anymore, and even maybe even an EP. So it's just really just putting out a lot of singles. I wanted to ask you what your thoughts are on just the future of music in general. Well, I think as I said before, I think there's things with you know with the attention span. It's not like anybody's fault. I think because everything's so like in, in the palm of your hands, literally you can get anything right there and then. You want you want the next thing as soon as someone gives it to you. So people will spend like three months on a, just one song and, you know, promote it. And then suddenly comes out on, you know, New Music Friday. Everyone's like, by Sunday, they're like, cool, what else you got? So it's like, you know, like the supply and demand is very, very difficult. But I think with that, you can also keep longevity as an artist because, you know, with music festivals as well, it's quite hard to find the next big headliner because yep. no one's not shifting 30 million copies albums. You know what I mean? They're just doing like 100 million streams of a single. So you can you can't just be recognised by one song, unfortunately. Well, you can maybe if you're on TikTok and things, but difficult to say because the things are so fast paced now. Like in six months' time, there could be a brand new app out, and that's what everyone's raving about. Look at the pandemic. Look how much TikTok overtaken the world. People's lives have changed. I, I think I have a general idea. I think just keep doing what I do. I am going to be looking at producing my own debut album only from my fans point of view because i've been waiting so long for it and then i'll just kind of just keep churning out just single after single really maybe just build it up and leave like, you know keep people at high and just maybe release it eventually as you know a 12 track album yeah look, we've lost the 
you know, the sleeves are going to record stores and buying things. We don't sell many CDs. Well, we do sell CDs here. Vinyls is definitely picking up back here in the UK. I recently played in their record store, HMV, and um, they were telling me how vinyls really picking up. So that's really good to see. Maybe we'll start seeing a turnaround of things again, and maybe like cassettes and things will start picking up, and maybe not CDs, but maybe a new a new format. You never know. I, uh, the vinyl has gotten popular here as a trendy thing. We see cassettes as well and eight tracks. But I tell everybody, I just recently saw the movie Top Gun on eBay, the VHS, the original VHS, it went for $8,000. So, <laughs> yeah. So if you have one in the, in the basement of your house or in a, a shed or something, definitely go put it on eBay. You never know. I'll go and have a look now. Yeah, exactly. But you're right. I think with binging, with the Netflix and everything, and you're, it's just everything is at the palm of your hands and you just want to get to the next thing. and. We'll see where it goes. Uh, TikTok has definitely changed the industry for sure. Exactly. Well, well Thomas, I, you know, I really appreciate you telling us a little bit about who you are, an intro to your life, but we have to pull over. We have to pull over for the lightning round. I tell everybody, all our guests, they better strap in because it does, get, yeah, there you go. We put safety first, seatbelt, strap in. It's gonna get bumpy, here we go. Okay. Thomas Kavanaugh, before we get into the lightning round, we always ask our guests to promote a local business. My friend, you have a local business that you want to promote with us today? Yes, I do indeed. And that is Smart System AV Limited. It's a very, very amazing company. Um, it's locally here in Exeter and they do like home cinemas. They're building CCTV for your homes. They're doing incredible work, really tidy sort of, you know, when you have things built on your computers and stuff and you put your TVs on your wall and all the wiring's just absolutely just haywire, it's just everywhere. Well, they can just turn that around and, you know, place it behind your wall seamlessly and just does a fantastic job. If you follow them on, um, you know, Instagram and that, they do amazing updates on the stories of before and after. They've done some work with me as well. It's been incredible. They've done some stuff here in my home studio and it's just been incredible. They do really good price, quality price and quality, you know, cabling and everything. I can't, you know, I can't stress more how good they are. They're just a fantastic, fantastic company. Very important for all of us who have those man caves. You got to hide those wires. Exactly. It can't be messy around that. <laughs> All right, well, I pre we appreciate it. We're gonna plug them and their social media. Obviously, go follow them on Instagram. We just heard they're a great follow. So we'd like to promote our local business here in Lampasas, Texas. It's a wife and husband-owned business called Folicious or Folicious. I'm not sure if you like pho, Thomas. We're big fans here. Some, some, I'm not some, sure what that is. Uh, it's a Vietnamese noodle soup. And what, okay, the, and, and what they've done is they've created, because of the pandemic, like everything else, They've put these bowls together and you can order them online on, on Amazon. They'll be sent right to your house. It includes the spices. All you do really is add water. It comes with the noodles, the spices. Sometimes you have to add your own little vegetables and things like that, but it's very good. So definitely go check them out. They're at Folicious Kits and their website is Folicious, excuse me, Folicious. I gotta say pho, like the professionals, Folicious.net. But Thomas, I'm gonna ask you later if you're coming to the States. And if you do, you better come to Austin and Lampasas because I'm going to show you a great spring roll and makes the best. All right, awesome. All right, here we go. We're getting in. This is it. This is the lightning round. So I ask every Brit this. It's an extremely important question. Are you grabbing a cup of coffee or a cup of tea? I'm having a cup of tea right here, <laughs> right now. Yes. You got to keep it traditional. All right. Okay. Another hard question the Beatles or the Stones oh right it's gonna it's gonna be the Beatles it's gotta be the Beatles can't go wrong I think I'm gonna go with the Stones today but you never know it might just change tomorrow okay can't help it you're in the rock punk emo slash bands I love your music and I love your taste in music so I wanted to ask you this Ramones or the Clash let's go with the Clash yeah I'm with you how about the Sex Pistols can we add them in there yeah let's put them in there let's put them in why not how about Bleak 182 I was gonna ask maybe a little more current oh yeah let's do let's do the old one with Tom the original lineup I'm with you on that all right Blink okay now we're to country we've made the transition we have to ask Thomas who do you got Waylon or Willie Willie Tom's wrong just to say that word just like <laughs> Okay, I know you're a guitar player, you're on stage, and this is gonna be, these, these questions are now getting hard, okay? But you're on stage, you need another instrument to play with you. What are you gonna have? What do you got on stage with you? You got the fiddle, a steel guitar, 
or a standing piano. Let's bring out a steel guitar, why not? Yeah, we need that twang, Thomas, that twang. Bring that. <laughs> Better bring that twang. Yeah, bring that twang over to Exeter. That's what you need. <laughs> okay, so now you've hopped in, right? The white lightning, we've already moved the steering wheel over to the right side. It's right side drive, we're getting used to it. But you've taken over, you're going coast to coast. But you need a pilot, a co-pilot. Musician, dead or alive, who do you got? Let's go with Brian Adams. Let's mix it up, let's bring Brian Adams in. Yes! Oh, Brian, we're talking the Canadian, we're talking summer of 69, right? Mm-hmm. You know what, it's funny, some people always get a little confused because, you know, of Ryan Adams. But, but I know, Brian, I don't know how, but yeah. <laughs> totally different music, but Brian Adams, one of my favorites. Can't go wrong. Cuts like a knife. <laughs> okay. Now that Brian's opt in, right? You need to play a song. He, you're, you're, you're driving. Are you playing one of your own? Are you playing one of Brian's popular songs or a deep cut? We will do a deep cut, but we'll also, as we're driving from coast to coast, we'll be discussing about a new song we should work on together, I reckon. It's going to be a long drive, so I reckon we can bang out a tune together. I think that's a great idea, and that's definitely what's going to happen. He would have some great stories, Thomas, I'm telling you. And then right there, you're putting a, a, a number one single out. <laughs> Well, hey, Thomas, you did great. Thank you so much for participating in the lightning round. You're an absolute pro. But now this is the reward. We get to talk about you some more and we want to plug your music. So you had a great single that came out, I want to say at the end of 2021, called The One. I know it was around the yeah. beginning of the year, the end of the year. It, it, everybody go check it out. It's you know streaming everywhere, but you also have a new single out. So we wanted to hear about that. What do you got? Yeah, so that single come out in April and that song's called Changing. It's a song about, um, it's a real personal song and it's the things about people that can relate to as well. It's, it's about being in a relationship and when you think things are all going well and suddenly something just doesn't feel right and you start questioning your actions and you're like, wait, is it, am I changing? Is it me? Is it you? Is it, it you know, is there things that like, and no one says anything and you're just in that kind of like worrying stage is like, is that person gonna leave me? No one said anything. It's, a, it's things that I think a lot of people do go through and that's what I like to touch on in my songs, things that you know, are very personal to me and also things that people go through because I, I find that's the best way to connect with people, be real. So um, it's out now and I, I'm, I'm, getting, you know, I'm getting some interest from it already and I'm hoping that I can, you know, talking with you guys today and hopefully like you know, expressing it more into the American market, that's, that's the plan going forward, so. Well, this is op your opportunity, Thomas. So how do we find you? How do we listen to you? So you can find me at Thomas Kavanagh Music. Uh, my surname is K-A-V-A-N-A-G-H. Some people find it, spell it with a C for some reason. Um, but you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter. I'm, I'm available everywhere. Just search me through and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much a social rabbit. I'm everywhere. So, um, well, to all our fans, go yeah, go follow, go stream. You got to go subscribe. You two extremely important as well. Well, Thomas Kavanaugh, this has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, you know, thank you very much for showing us around your hometown. I'm getting a little lost, but we're going to find our way home. Unfortunately, we have to kick you out. <laughs> okay. Just the way it happens. But before I kick you out, my friend, all we need is a song. Can we get a song from you today? Yeah, it's fine. You can get my brand new single, Changing. How about that? I love it. I love this. Well, here you go. This is Thomas Cavanaugh, Changing. Thank you.
memories And all the times you made me feel so free How did we end up in a moment like this? Is it me? Is it you? Is there nothing we can do? Cause everything's changing And every high and every low I don't know which way to go There you go. There's Thomas Cavanaugh, his new song, Changing. I, I love it. It's great. I can't wait for it to just really play out here in the United States. And not only that, Thomas, when are you coming to the United States? Well, I've just come back. Um, I've, just, I've just come back. I went to Nashville in April, and um, I'm planning to hopefully come again in June for CMA Fest. That is the next plan. That is the game plan. I love this plan. And would you happen to have a chance to come to Austin? We got we to gotta get you some uh, Texas barbecue. Well, if you got barbecue, I'm coming. It's on the map. I'm there. there Let's go. go. Well, hey, Thomas, I'm glad that you've been to America. How was it? Was it good? A good trip? Oh, it was good. Yeah, it's very, very good. Um, you know, it's an amazing, beautiful city, and uh, I can't wait to go back. We look forward to it. Thank you again, Thomas Cavanaugh. Definitely go check him out. Subscribe, follow, listen. His music is great. He's game changing. Thank you again, sir. Thank you. I wanna take you home.